Welcome back to another product breakdown here at 3D Jake. And this time we're checking out Anycubic Cobra 2. This is the latest addition to their FDM family. So what is the first thing you notice when you look at this? Standard bed sling, right? Yeah, not quite. Let's check it out. Okay, so basic specs first. The Cobra 2 has a 220 by 220 build area. It has auto leveling, it has a touchscreen, belt tensioners, and a PEI plate. It's quite similar to the predecessor, the original Cobra from Anycubic. I think the, the touchscreen, the tensioners, and the PEI are pretty much the same, but it does have some differences. So let's take a look. Firstly, the original Cobra had no runout sensor, and we have one right here. Because of this, I'm guessing, the spool holder position has been changed from the top to the side, which clips onto the extrusions. However, there are still threaded inserts on top for a holder, and that is just one weird thing, and we'll, we'll get to this. The filament sensor is a standard end stop mechanical switch, and the filament feeds from that into a PTFE tube that runs to the extruder. Yes, it has a PTFE tube, even though it has a direct drive extruder. I'm not sure why exactly. Why not have the spool holder on top with the filament sensor below, like on lots of other printers? But then you don't need a PTFE tube. Strange. The cable connections for the extruder and hot end are nicely organized and secured in this multi-pin connector. But the cable loom is not that pretty with these clips that secure to the PTFE. And we do have some decent cable strain relief at the back of the bed. Moving over to the extruder and wow, look at that. That is a huge fan. Obviously with a high speed printer, we need a good fan or fans. This is a big fan. And yes, it works perfectly when going at high speed, but compared to other printers at this price point, it is a little bit louder. This is one thing I noticed when upgrading other bed slingers to input shaping on Marlin or Clipper. Uh, you do really need a good cooling system. And yeah, it is a bit louder than other printers, but Anycubic definitely delivers with cooling, and I've had zero issues with that so far. Moving to the bed, we see a PEI plate, which has worked wonderfully. Uh, it is not double-sided though, unfortunately. I don't know, sometimes I like just flipping it over when I don't want to clean the surface. It's like people do with rugs, just uh, deal with it in a few weeks. Next, we have these groove wheels on the X-axis, and if we're gonna go high speed, we really don't want those hard rubber wheels. And um, this is a I've never seen this on another bed slinger before. They have these on other printers. I have seen them on like the FL Sun V400, which uses these, but never on a bed slinger. Uh, it's interesting. The motion is is very, very, very smooth on the X axis. And I think it's a great addition that, that Anycubic have made. On the Z axis, however, they do use the standard uh, rubber wheels, but it's on the Z axis, so it's, it's understandable. Next up is the touchscreen, and yes, it seems to be the same one from the original Cobra by Anycubic. Uh, it does only have English and Chinese, unfortunately. The touchscreen is very minimalist in the main menu. Uh, during printing, you can access settings to change temperature, speed, fan, and Z offset on the fly, of course. The main menu does have an option to remove and insert filament, however, which is, which is quite refreshing. Though for some reason, it needs to auto home when inserting the filament. Maybe it does that in case the Z level is too low and there is no space to purge, but then it also just keeps purging when you ask it to insert the new filament. It just keeps going. You need to press stop for it to actually stop. It makes sense for a thorough color change, but I just didn't notice that at first and wondered why the hell it was happening. The ABL is really nice though, and this printer has 25 point leveling. The time it takes to do a full pass over the bed is about average, but what is really interesting about the printer is that it has no leveling wheels at the bottom. Now, Prusa did this years ago with the Mark III, but it hasn't been implemented into many other printers, let alone budget printers. With the Mark III and other printers without leveling wheels, leveling is made easier because they have dual Z motors which can be operated independently. Because of this, each side can be trammed automatically, and if you have a very rigid bed, that is basically all you need to do to make sure the gantry and bed are totally parallel. Any other small variations in distance is picked up by the auto leveling. But because the Cobra 2 doesn't have two Z motors, it can't do this. Instead, it just has a little sensor at the back of the bed, which is just pretty cool and really refreshing to see. Apart from the initial leveling calibration done when I got this printer, I haven't actually had to make any other manual adjustments. Instead of the dual Z, it has a timing belt on top. So when one lead screw is turned by the motor, the other one is too. I find this kind of strange even more so when the single Z motor on the left is labeled ZL, as if they were thinking of making it into a dual Z, but then changed their mind. Whatever the case may have been, there is no issue with it not being a dual Z. There is zero play on the Z axis, it is all very rigid and secure, and actually I think the timing belt is an austere, yes, but smart move. Assembly was super easy. This took about 15 or 20 minutes, which is about standard for a bed slinger of this size. What was weird is this tiny little cable that is 
labeled as PE and I had no idea what this was. It turned out it was the earth cable. Um, but I didn't realize because it was so thin and it was plugged into where the, near where the X motor is, where usually it's on the bed or the hot end or the frame or something. Um, but other than that, the instructions were very, very unambiguous and easy to follow. Any cubic have always said that their printers can print down to 0.05 millimeter layer heights. And they've said this even from when they released their mega range years ago. This is kind of different from other manufacturers who don't really go into that much detail about this. And when I'm printing at the lowest layer height, I always chose 0.1 millimeter layer heights. But I decided to try it out and see what happens. And it came out pretty nicely, actually. This is 0.05 millimeter layer heights. It's not bad. It's pretty seamless. The Cobra 2 aims at higher speeds and higher volumetric flows. So for this, we have a volcano hot end. The default test piece on the printer is a standard Benchy, and this actually printed in 30 minutes, exactly. And to have a budget bed slinger print a Benchy under 30 minutes is pretty good. And this came out really, really well. No issues with the little chimney stack, no bridging issues, tiny, tiny, tiny bit of stringing and a tiny, tiny bit of blobbing on the portholes right here. But other than that, it's damn good for a bed slinger printing a Benchy in 30 minutes. We tried to print really, really fast at 220 millimeters per second. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that is the limit. There's a fair amount of ringing between the cubes on this vase and a little bit of under extrusion actually, which was I was not expecting. So yeah, I'm pretty sure 200 should be the limit for this printer. But we found really nice results when not pushing it to an early grave. Uh, this one was printed at 150 millimeters per second. And apart from the seam on the hat, it's pretty much flawless. And our magic PLA looks absolutely stunning here. Now, of course, we have a direct drive. So obviously we're going to print some TPU and we are trying our own A95 TPU. This is a black one. And normally with TPU, you print a little slow. So with a standard printer, maybe 40 or 50 millimeters per second, but we tried to do 100 millimeters per second. And it came out pretty well. There's a little bit of bobbling on the surfaces, but overall good, no bulging. Surface quality is good and the bottom surface looks absolutely beautiful. I love textured PEI sheets. There was one thing I noticed about this printer and for me, it's not an issue at all. And for a lot of other people, it's not an issue. But seeing as this is a budget printer and a lot of people who will be interested in this uh, would be buying a printer for the first time, it should be noted. So this printer does not have a USB cable uh, a cutters or a spatula, which seems like it should for a budget printer, for a printer that's designed for people who have never printed before. It's not a big issue, but it's kind of strange. Like, yeah, for me and a lot of people, it's not a big deal. We have cutters, but damn it, I want my cutter. I have a graveyard drawer for my cutter. It needs soles. At first I had some mixed feelings with this printer. It seemed kind of strange in that the designers weren't quite sure what the end product would be because it has these little weird things like the, the when you're inserting the filament, it, it homes and then it just constantly extrudes when you're putting it in again. And the, the ZL label on the Z motor and the dubious need for the PTFE tube, it's just kind of strange. They're not problems, they're just kind of weird. But for speed and quality, this bed slinger stands out among the rest, like a lot. Right now in the market, there's a lot of high speed printers coming out that can go like over 500 millimeters per second. And that's that's cool. But maybe you want a low budget option. Maybe you just want a small printer that can print up to 200 millimeters per second and that's it. And if that is the kind of person that you are, this is something that you should consider. So it seems like Anycubic are kind of defying a trend here. A nice high speed printer that doesn't break the bank. Maybe that's exactly what we need to ground us. Because if you're getting a 3D printer and you're considering something like the Ender 3V2 or the Sidewinder Genius Pro, why would you when you can print at least twice as fast with this and at the same quality? Thank you so much for joining us here today at 3D Jake. If you're new to 3D printing and you just stumbled upon this video and you're not sure what printer is best for you, then let us know. Drop us a comment or send us an email or communicate telepathically with us if you have that ability. And we'll see you guys next time. Later.